Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Uh, bless us as we learn our children's sermon for today. Help the children uh, to understand what we are learning today and put it to practice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My name is Agneta. And I'm blessing. Can you believe this is the last Sabbath of the year? And what a year it has been. We as the Glorious Choral, we are thankful that God has given us this opportunity to close the year with you. Our theme for this month's children's sermon has been... The Lord's Supper, also known as the Holy Communion. We have learned so much, haven't we, Agneta? We have. Do you remember the showdown between Jesus and Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane? Oh, yes. Christ sacrificed for our sins. It is the reason we celebrate the Lord's Supper. What about the sanctuary message? A timely message indeed. We learn that Christ is our sacrificial lamb. We no longer have to come to church with animal sacrifice, sac sacrifices like the Israelites. What about the foot washing ceremony? Jesus, the Sabbath, Savior. Yeah. And last Sabbath, we went deeper into learning about the symbols that are used for the Lord's, the Lord's Supper. Jesus, the bread of life. The bread represented his body, which was broken for our sins. And the wine represented his blood, which was poured for our sins. Hmm. After learning all that, I think we have exhausted the message. Or have we? Hmm. Now that I think of it, I think we are in danger of forgetting one very important lesson. And what will that be? Let us revisit our Bible text for today so that we can understand our lesson better. It comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. And it says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But, but let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So, can you guess today's topic, boys and girls? Let's say it together. Examine yourself. Actually, the Lord's Supper is more of a question of who, what, why, and how. I don't get it, Blessing. Please explain. Certainly. We have learned who the Holy Communion points us to. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. We have learned what to do when we celebrate the Holy Communion. We show humility by washing each other's feet. We have also learned why we celebrate the Holy Communion. We are remembering the great price that was paid for our sins. Now we need to understand why, no, how. How should we partake of the Holy Communion? Is that really important? Of course it is. The observance of the Holy Communion is not just a ritual performed by our church every quarter of the year. It is sacred, with sacred implications. So what are we talking about? How we partake of the Holy Communion is very important. Paul the Apostle warned against the turning of this celebration to an occasion of our eating and indulging. This is a time of sober self-reflection and of our sins and Christ's sacrifice. So what you're saying is, before we partake of the Holy Communion, we should take a moment to confess to God any unrepented sin and receive God's forgiveness. Exactly. Paul rebuked the church for, in Corinth for the application of the Lord's Supper. They did so in an unworthy manner. And it says in the book of and it says in the Bible, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29 and 30, that those who eat and drink in an unworthy manner invite God's judgment upon themselves. For that reason, many were weak and some were even sick. Some of them even died. Wow, that sounds serious. It's a big deal to God. It should also be a big deal to us. Christ's sacrifice should not be taken lightly. That reminds me, many boys and girls got baptized in our church this year. They may not know about this. 
Boys and girls, the Holy Communion is a very wonderful celebration, but it is not a time for fun and games. It is a time to remember the gift of grace that God has given us. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, examine yourself first. Confess your sins and repent. He had promised that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And do you know what? What? I'm excited about the promise that Jesus made in Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. On his very first Holy Communion, he said, But I say to you, I will not take of the Holy Communion, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day that I take it with you anew in my Father's kingdom. This can only mean one thing. Jesus is coming again. As glorious choral, we are looking forward to the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we hope you are too. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for good health. Thank you for letting us be here today. Help the boys and girls understand what you've told them. And help all of us to be here with to be here with you in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.